Welcome back to the End Time Remnant YouTube channel. This is Dorothy. Today is July 16th, 2024. I pray all of you are doing well. I pray you are blessed. And I pray that July has been thus far a month of fasting, prayer, freedom, breakthrough, revelation, and most importantly, momentum, forward movement for you, um, moving forward into all of the things that the Lord has for you. So on this particular video, I wanted to talk to you about something that has been on my heart for a few months now, and I finally decided to just stop ignoring how I was feeling and take it to the Lord in prayer and just get his wisdom, get understanding and so the question I'm asking and answering on this video today is, can two believers be unequally yoked? You know, so often when people talk about um, being unevenly yoked, a lot of people are talking about education or finances or material things like, you know, this person is not my equal because they don't have this or because they don't have that or because they haven't accomplished this or because they haven't accomplished that. But in actuality, these things have nothing at all to do with being evenly or unevenly yoked. OK, being unequally yoked means being in a close relationship where there is a fundamental mismatch in core beliefs and values, not money, not educational levels, not material things, but a mismatch in core beliefs and values. And the danger here is that these types of mismatched relationships can lead to difficulties and conflicts that can actually hinder someone's spiritual journey and relationship with God. So if we go to scripture and we're looking at 2 Corinthians 6, 14, it reads, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? So in this context, yoked is metaphorically referring to the practice of yoking two animals together to pull a load. A yoke is a piece of wood fastened over the necks of two animals and attached to the plow or the cart that they're supposed to be pulling together, right? The idea is for um, the pulling to be done on a straight line. And in order to do that, the two animals need to be um, very similar. They need to be alike. The idea behind the metaphor is that two similar animals are more effective in pulling the plow straight when yoked together versus two dissimilar animals okay mismatched animals would pull unevenly making the task harder and less efficient and so the scripture tells us not to be unevenly yoked with unbelievers and that is perfectly understandable but in recent months i've wondered if it is possible to be unevenly yoked with professing followers of christ follow me the content of this video is not is not meant to discourage anyone, right? I'm, I'm trying to edify, I'm trying to encourage, and I'm trying to share um, the revelation that I've received. So I want to make sure I choose my words wisely because I don't want to give off an air of spiritual pride in any way. Because the truth is, we're not all the same within the body of Christ. We haven't all been saved for the same amount of time. We do not all have the same life experiences or the same experiences once we come into the body of Christ. We don't all have the same assignment within the body of Christ. And what I've learned for sure is that what God requires of us is absolutely not the same from, from individual to individual. What is required of me um, may not be required of someone else. And what is required of them may not be required of me. We are not all handled the same. And if you are new to the body of Christ, you, you, you will walk with him long enough to understand what I mean when I say that. Some of us are on a very short leash and we don't get away with doing half of what other followers of Christ find themselves doing in the way of sin. Okay, We are all in the body, but we are not all the same and God does not handle all of us the same. <laughs> okay, And so with that said, I realized recently that it is very possible to be unequally yoked with a believer. So I have a sister in Christ whom I love dearly, um, but I noticed that 99.999% of her conversation about God has to do with her expectations of blessings from him. When he blesses her, um, you know, she often calls to share the testimony. And I notice um, a lot of times her heart posture is often, how do I put it? God is good. And he's done this thing, but I know he has more for me. 
It's basically like God just blessed her, but it's kind of like, and this is good, God, this is good, but I know there's more. I know there's more. I know you have more for me. I know you just blessed me, but I know you have more for me, right? Blessings, blessings, and more blessings. Now, here's the thing. I know this train of thought well, because when I first got saved, that's all they were preaching, right? I didn't know that there was inevitable suffering that comes along with following Christ for real. I didn't know that I would have to put down and leave behind a lot of things for the sake of the gospel, right? The only messages I ever really heard coming out of the pulpit involved God's blessings, prosperity, and how basically he exists to just give us whatever we ask of him. Listen, listen, this couldn't be any further from the truth, but I had to learn that on my own. Okay. The prosperity gospel is deception. God is not some genie in the sky waiting to drop houses, new cars, and riches on people. All these material things will turn to ash eventually, right? God is spirit. And God's first priority is the condition of our eternal souls and our readiness for his eternal kingdom. These houses, these new jobs, these new cars and all these other things that are added. These are bonuses. Should it be his will for your life? Okay. He's not obligated to do any of this extra stuff. But to have the type of relationship with God where you genuinely believe all he wants to do is bless you and shield you from suffering in this earth realm is deception. It's a lie. Okay, we love quoting scriptures about how the Lord will pour out blessings. We won't have room enough to receive, but no one wants to quote Luke 14, 26, which reads, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and his mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple or John. 1225 which reads he who loves his life will lose it and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life these words are in red right which means jesus said it so to be his disciple you have to hate your own life i don't think people understand the only people who are hating their own lives are the people who are suffering suffering comes along with the call to discipleship period the call to discipleship is a call to suffering, and I know that well, and those who are rooted in Christ know that well. There's no question about it in my mind. So I struggle to be yoked to people who only want to talk about the blessings of God, people who only want to speak about God from the perspective of him giving them something. I struggle to be yoked to people whose faith is puddle deep. Okay, people who haven't really been through much of anything, sacrificed anything, and yet expect so much from God in return. So in recent months, I found myself, what word do I want to use? Almost annoyed by the conversations that I would have with this sister in Christ. Um, there was just kind of something in my spirit that would rise up just listening to her talk about God. And God knows I love her dearly. There's no question about it. But it was like there was something in my spirit that kind of felt like she is your sister in Christ. But you two don't have much in common after both believing that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. Her walk with the Lord doesn't look anything like yours. Her understanding of him is very surface level and superficial after years of being saved. Now, that doesn't mean the Lord is not doing a mighty work within her. It just means the two of you are different. All right? You're at different stages in spiritual growth. Right? Your journeys are different. You're not at the same place. And to be yoked with her is an uneven yoke. No doubt about it. All right? Earlier I spoke about how when you are unevenly yoked with people, these types of mismatches can lead to difficulties and conflict that can hinder your spiritual journey and relationship with God. Let me tell you something. I started to notice that the more I engaged in, in conversation with her, my train of thought began to shift. I began to pray from my flesh for material things more often than I normally would. And why? Because that prosperity gospel deception is contagious. You hear what I say? You sit around and listen to people long enough who only seek God's hand and not his face. You'd be surprised at just how quickly you may start to do the same. I am a watchman. I have not been called to sit in prayer and constantly pray for material things that I want and need. Not by a long shot. There's too much going on in the land, and those called to intercession just don't have that luxury. So in a nutshell, I want to share with you my recent revelation. It is indeed possible to be unequally yoked with a believer who simply has a different call and walk than you. 
right? Someone who is um, at a different place in the Lord spiritually in terms of maturity and growth. We are all one. No one of us is more important to God than the other. However, we are different. Take a look at this picture. Clearly, these are both animals, right? But they are not the same type of animal. They are not the same size. They are not equal in strength. They are not equal in weight. And they cannot comfortably hold the same amount of weight. And so it is with fellow believers within the body of Christ. And that's okay. That's what I've come to tell you. Unlike me, you don't have to go months feeling confused or vexed in your spirit about it, right? God does all things well. We weren't all designed to be the same, and that's what makes the body of Christ so special. But I just thought it was important to let you know that it is very possible to be unequally yoked with someone who actually believes in Christ. It doesn't make you better or more valuable to the advancement of God's kingdom than that person, but it does mean you are different. And so as we continue to grow in Christ, may we use this knowledge to consistently walk in wisdom. And what do I mean? A brother or sister in Christ who is in the prosperity gospel stage of this walk isn't someone I would ask to pray for me. And why? Because their prayers are still fleshly. Their prayers are still carnal. And they haven't yet learned that blessings come in many forms. And the greatest blessings are the prospering of the soul, not our bank accounts. Right? Instead, in my wisdom, I would ask for a prayer from a fellow believer who is more spiritually mature, one who knows how to allow the Holy Spirit to lead them in prayer. And if they pray for finances or material blessings over my life, it would be the last thing they mention because they know it matters the least. I can't take money, a house, or luxury items with me to the grave. And the condition of my eternal soul is paramount. It is priority. Right. I would ask someone to pray for me who actually gets it. And that's someone that I would consider to be equally yoked with me. Right. Um, I pray that this video blesses you and helps provide context and understanding. If this was ever a question you asked yourself at any point in your walk with the Lord. You know, we are all part of the body of Christ. You know, those who who understand that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, those who have received him as Lord and Savior, those who follow him. But we are not all at the same place in our walk. We are not all um, having the same assignments. We are not all having the same experiences. We are not all battling the same type of warfare. Um, There's a lot of different things going on, even within the body of Christ. And so ultimately, I just wanted to do my part to let you know that it is indeed possible to be unequally yoked with a believer. And so that's all I had for you on today. And God willing, I will see you next time.